If you want to use light sources such as point lights with SRS, you have two options. The first option is the smooth lights system. This show displays lights smoothly with gradients on your mesh. And the other option is the cell shaded lights system, which um, creates cell shaded light spots, so light spots with a hard transition from light to no light on your mesh. In this video you're going to learn how to use both of those systems. The first of those two systems is the smooth light system. This has a few key advantages, such as you having an unlimited amount of different light colors, whereas with the cell shaded light system you're limited to just three light colors. This could mean that you have more than three point lights, of course, but only three light colors in those three in those point lights that you're using. In order to set up this smooth lights system, you only need to do one thing. Go to your SRS actor and select the smooth lights dynamic light mode. This is on by default. Now all you need to do is calibrate SRS to work with the lighting of your scene. If you change the your sky sphere, or the brightness of your sun or your skylight, you may need to readjust this calibration adjustment parameter right here. In order to adjust this correctly, first go to Stylized Rendering System, Blueprints, and drag the Light Calibration Actor into your scene. Drag it to a place where no point lights are affecting this object, so it's only affected by the sky sphere, the skylight, and the sun and then click on your SRS actor and click the check mark for calibration mode. Now you'll have to look at your calibration actor at the sunlit side and adjust the calibration adjustment parameter down below. You have to expand this and slowly increase each of the parameters until your mesh will be entirely black. Now we can see there's a bit more red here, so we'll have to increase these, this R parameter to get rid of the red. There's still a bit of red in there, but most of it is gone. This looks good. Let's try to get rid of some more blue by increasing the blue. The B parameter. This looks good. Now let's try to get rid of this green. And lastly, let's... Um, Increase red just a bit more. This looks alright. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, as you can see, if you can even see this on YouTube, there are a few lines in the colors still here. But if most of it is gone and the light like, calibration actor is almost black, it should work without any artifacts. And if you encounter any artifacts, just increase this calibration adjustment parameter later. Now, with this done, just leave calibration mode and you're ready to use the system. Once SRS is cal calibrated to your lighting conditions in your scene, you can be sure that you won't have any artifacts caused by wrong detection of lights. So now we can move all our, our point lights around our objects and you'll see that all of the objects will be affected by this light. Colored lights are also affected by patterns. In order to control how patterns affect colored lights, you have this dynamic lights pattern thickness parameter right here. You can increase this to increase the thickness of the pattern spots in colored lights or decrease it to decrease the thickness. If you want to use the cell shaded light system, switch the dynamic light mode to cell shaded lights and adjust the calibration adjustment parameter like I showed previously. Now in order to get the cell shaded light system working there are two ways. The first method is to open the cell shaded lights category and head down to locked light color slots. As SRS can only handle three different light colors in if you use the cell shaded lights mode you'll have to specify these here. So as our light has a color of P 
purely red. Let's set this color in the first light color slot. So enable this light color slot and now set the color right here. So now we have 100 zero, zero, just like in our point light. And now our point light will take effect on the objects around it. If you want to add more lights, simply drag a new light into your scene and change the color to your new desired color. For so for this let's go for a blue. Something like this. So zero, zero, 001 will be our color. Now let's use this color for the in the second locked light color slot. And now if you drag this blue light close to our meshes, it will take effect. Note that depending on the color of your object, your lights will appear bigger or smaller. Using this system, you can have up to three light colors. So we can add another green right here. Like this. Now I intentionally picked three different light colors that were very far apart, as the more distinct your light colors are, the less likely it is for your light colors to cause any artifacts. An important note if you're using the cell shaded light system is that your light color should always have the maximum brightness as any brightness that is not maximal will cause artifacts, such as lights appearing on all your objects, as you can see right here. So make sure your brightness or your value is always at 1. Now with this approach, you will have th three different light colors that are locked to your SRS actor. However, you may want to change your light colors on runtime. For this, we'll need to use the cell shaded light color manager right here. This is a system you can add to your game state that will handle the light colors on runtime. Note that if you use this system, this, your light colors won't display correctly when viewing an editor. Note that when using this system, your light colors won't display correctly when you're not playing. In order to set this, this system up, let's deactivate our locked light color slots. So now our lights won't take effect on our cell shaded objects anymore. And let's find our game state. Navigate to your content folder and from there go to third person BP and blueprints and here you'll find the third person game mode. Note that this may be different in your project but as I'm using the third person example project this is where my game mode is. Open your game mode and here you'll find an overview of all your classes that your game mode uses. Here you'll find the game state class which is currently just the base game state. So we'll have to create a game state for our project. If you are already using a custom game state, just do what I'm going to do in this new class in your custom game state. So click create new blueprint and let's just create it in the third person blueprint folder under blueprints. Call this cell shaded lights game state. Now in this game state, let's open it up we're going to have to add a component. This component is our cell shaded light color manager we can find right here. So drag it into this and now our game state and our game mode already has the light color manager. What we need to do now is implement an interface that allows any object in our scene to communicate with this light color manager. For this go to your class settings and under interfaces click add. In order to now implement our interface, on the left side under interfaces you'll see the function get light color manager. Double click this and your a new function will open. We'll need to simply drag our BP cell shaded light color manager that we just dragged into our game state to this return node. And with this we're done in our game state. We can now save this. And we're almost ready to use the light color manager to change our light colors on runtime. Now I'm going to demo this by creating a new blueprint that is going to communicate our light color of this point light with the light color manager. In order to do this, I'm going to create a new blueprint that simply has this point light. And this blueprint is going to be a simple actor. 
I'm going to call this BP cell shaded lights example. Now to demonstrate this, I want to I want to on event begin play get the light color of our point light. So get light color and then call the function register light color. This function tells our light color manager that we have a point light in our scene with this light color. Plug this light color into here and now we're good to go. If we now go, if we now play and walk over here, our point light will take effect. Now we can change this light color to a different color and if we go in game once again it will work. Now should you ever destroy this point light for any reason, so maybe this is a point light that's part of a fireball or something like that, all you have to do is before destroying it call the function unregister light color and connect this ID that you received when you registered your light color with this unregister light color function. Now if I do this we're immediately unregistering our light color so it won't take effect. The light color manager system works as follows. Every time you register a new light to your scene, the light color manager remembers this color. I'm going to visualize this with a box right here. If you register another color, in this case orange, it will also remember this. And then you can might go ahead and register another color, in this case blue. So far so good. Now we have reached three different light colors. What happens if we register a fourth color? I'm going to draw this color right here. Now here is where it gets interesting. Our light color manager now goes through this stack from the bottom. It finds this co light color right here, sees that it's the first time it has registered this kind of red. So it checks this light color and this is going to be a light color that you use. Then it goes up checks the next light color and sees this is the first time this orange gets registered so it uses this light color. Then it goes up again and it sees the blue. This is also the first time that blue is used so it registers this light color. And now all three light color slots that are available have been filled up and anything up here will get disregarded. Note that this will not delete those light colors from the memory of the light color manager, but they will simply not be selected for the light color rendering. Now you unregister your blue point light. What happens now is it gets deleted from the stack and your green light color moves down. Now the light color manager goes through all colors once again, starting from the bottom. It finds the first red, selects this, finds the sec first orange, selects this and then finds the next green. Now after unregistering blue, the green light color will be selected as well. Now what happens if you register more than one light source with the same light color? What the light color manager does is it once again starts from your stack from the bottom. So this one is the oldest one created and this one is the newest one that was registered. So it finds this red and sees this is the first time it has encountered this red. So it'll add this to the light colors that get displayed. Then it goes up. It sees this red but it realizes this has already been added so it does not add this. So it goes up once again and it sees this orange. The first time it has encountered this orange so it'll add this. Then it goes up once again, sees the red and it already has added this add so this red gets ignored. So it moves up once again and sees the green and this green gets added. So in short what the light color manager does, it adds the oldest three unique colors to the colors that get displayed and all other colors get dis get disregarded. So here I quickly created a system that changes the light color of our point light every half second and it always unregisters the previous color and registers the new color. This allows us to randomly switch between any color 
and it does not fill up the light buffer. So to quickly demonstrate what would happen if we do not unregister our light color, after three light colors we could not have any different light colors. And some artifacts might even appear if you have a light color that is somewhere in between those two. The system works like this. When we start, this is what we already created, we just register our base light color to the light color system and we save our light color ID in this variable light color ID. And then we set a timer by event. This simply executes this event every half second and it's looping so it does this for eternity. And in change light color, we every time we change our light color, we unregister our previous light color. So we just saved our light color in the light color ID, so we unregister this. And then we set our new light color to our point light. This new light color is simply a random color, so a, ra a random unit vector that we convert to a color. But this, as as I as we learned previously, our light color always has to be at maximum value. And this can simply be done by finding the highest of those three components, so the red, green and blue channel, and dividing our color through the highest one of those. And if we do this, the value will be 1. Connect this to new light color, and then register this new light color that we just set for our point light in our light color manager, and then remember this color so we can unregister it later.